All right. So obviously I've seen your movie and, uh, you know, there are like so many topics in there that actually inspired my questions. And I would like to start with a specific one, uh, because very early on in the movie, uh, your character, Anne, is already told what her area of responsibilities is, and it's not exorcism. However, one day she sneaks into class where she's not supposed to be. Yeah. And I was wondering if you ever found yourself in a place where you were not supposed to be at first because you wanted to learn something. Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I have, um, I guess this isn't to learn. I have a quality about me that if there's like a red tape up or like a VIP area, somehow some part of me really wants to figure out a way in. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't love the idea of exclusivity slash I also think I'm a little bit of a troublemaker. Um, in terms of being left out and then wanting it's interesting. I'm third out of four children mm -hmm. and my parents used to call me ears when I was younger because I would sit, I would hide and sit outside of rooms that I wasn't really supposed to be around oh. because I wanted to listen to what the adults were saying. Yeah. And I never made that connection with Sister Anne until this very moment. But yeah, <laughs> wow. that would be it. So awesome. <laughs> and what about because because your character also reminds us that um, like female doctors and female exorcists were unthinkable and that somebody needs to make the first step. So why but not? We still haven't had a female president. Exactly. So there are there's still a lot of work to do, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so I love that she says that somebody needs to make the first step. And so why not she? And uh, obviously, uh, in our lives, we, we make first steps all the time in order to achieve something. And I was wondering, looking back, what would you say has been like the most important first step for you in order to get there as a person, an artist, where you are today? Leaving home. Really? Yeah. I, um, I come from a very close family and coming back actually um my, I grew up and we have like Sunday dinners every Sunday my grandparents live five minutes away my sister and her kids are like um a few blocks away and um when the opportunity came for me to go to LA I'm like the only member of my family that has like would permanently move away and it okay. felt like betrayal in a weird way but I knew for me I just needed to expose myself to more in life um mm -hmm. had a very happy life but it was definitely a bubble in a certain capacity yes um so getting away having to live on my own having not to have like the financial support or any of those things I like I always I think I had if something really went wrong I would be okay I think my parents would help me out but right um that was that was a big move for me and I think from there I met people and were chat like a lot of the ideas. I think I was very black and white in my twenties, and I think I have a lot more room for gray now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, I. Um, uh, you know, th this step is still one to do because you know I am like uh, still living like in a three generation household because like. I am from Italy originally, and so that no is like very typical, you know, like it's super common. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we built like a house like for three generations, and so we're still all like uh together. Yeah. But yeah. But I'm like getting to the point where I'm like, oh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe so maybe not. moving, imagine moving a an entire country away. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yes. yeah yeah it's hard and they, my family huge. was always encouraging to like you know go study abroad for a year but never like forever yeah you know? <laughs> exactly um and it, your political views change you know I think that you don't realize that like when you grow up in a certain society the way you think is built upon that society um yeah. so when you move somewhere else all of a sudden things are put into question and you question so many things you thought to be true before and I think that's the purpose of art is to kind of expose and 
grow as humans. It's why I love acting because I can live in this capacity in my life, but the characters I play, you know, open up the doors in a safe way. Yeah, yeah, and, and speaking of of, of changes, uh, because um, when your character is like allowed uh, at an exorcism, uh, Quinn actually asks her to not deviate from like the traditional procedure and but she still makes the decision to try it her own way because she feels like she can better connect with the person that still must be somewhere in that body that is possessed um so i was wondering um if you ever actually had to like break rules or change traditions in your career in order to like succeed in terms of breaking rules um it's interesting i one of the first projects I worked on, um, there's some nudity involved. And I coach young girls and like in lacrosse. Um, and I've had a specific kind of leadership role in my community for a long time. And I had to be very, it was almost like, I feel like I'm comfortable doing this because it serves a story and you can't have, I was playing a stalker of a band. I was like, that's such a huge part of that world and what that is. It's not just like for, you know, um, for the shot. Um, that was really hard. It was hard for me also after, you know, I've, I have a dad, you know, sometimes growing up becoming a woman can be, you know, you always be daddy's little girl. And there's times where it's like, you have to see me now as a different, as a different person. And, and that can change relationships where I'm still very close to my dad, but it's, those are just the pains of growing up. Yeah. I, and I can see that with, uh, you know, with my sister, you know, my fifth, my, my sister is going to turn 50 this year, but like her stepdad is still like uber protective. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's sweet. Like I think father daughter relationships are beautiful. But I feel like the best thing that a parent can do is kind of be like, you're okay. I trust you. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's like, yeah, exactly. That, that, like, I feel like there's so much faith in, in saying that rather than like, I need to protect you all the time. It's like, there's no faith in me as a person. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so um, there's like, you know, <laughs> Quinn isn't really amused when Anne shows up with like statistics and the fact that like 90% of all possessed people who go through an exorcism actually die. And he's not amused that she shows up with that because he's like, how do you even dare to question like a, a thousand year old right? It, we, it's yeah. been that way and it will continue to be that way. There's no need to change that. Um, and I was wondering if there is something specific about Hollywood, about you know the film business that never really changed since you started off and you're quite wondering why that is. It's interesting because I feel like in my, in my years, there's so much changing going on and there's so much like we went through Black Lives Matter, we're going through, we went through the Me Too movement. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that is still hard, like money talks, you know what I mean? So when the, you have the power of social media and followings like that, it's like, are people getting roles based on talent? Are they getting roles based on their reach? And yeah. seeing seeing people kind of, I don't, I don't want to say the word that's coming into my head, um, <laughs> but it's like being famous, like you have kids now who are just like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And they're like famous. And I'm like, that's so empty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But it's seen to look so beautiful. That's the only thing that I think is like, I don't know a way out. I don't know how we deviate from that. That's hard. Right, right. Very complicated. Especially as an actress, sorry. Especially as an actress where you're like, you want to be able to work so you want to take part in it because you know that it's part of the business, but at the same time, you're like, I don't want to encourage young girls to, you know, to get involved in stuff like this. So you just have to be very careful about what you share, what you put out in the world and, you know, encourage people to turn their devices off every once in a while. Yeah, I see. And I, and I think it's like uber important to 
understand why you want to be part of the business? Is it really because you like you are so like almost desperate to tell these important stories or whatever? Yeah. Or is it really because you are just waiting to appear on a red carpet? Yeah, and it's interesting. You see, sometimes you work with actors. We have, we have such an incredible cast, but it's so hard because so much of what we do is connecting with the other person. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people, you know, you're not getting anything in return because they're just caring about how they're coming across. You know, they're not going to let you affect them. Yeah. And that that can be really hard and you see it in the way that it's affecting acting today. Um, I just, you know, I also just like worry about yourself. You know, you know, you can only do what you can do and it's a business that you're in. So you might as well figure out a way to enjoy it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there, there is something interesting that Quinn tells your character. It's actually a warning. He goes like, if you step away from church in order to follow your own path you you most likely will end up in darkness alone um and i was wondering uh because obviously going your own path can be very tricky sometimes because a lot of people try to go the safe way and so i was wondering um whenever um, if there was like a moment where you felt it's like absolutely necessary to go your own way during your career, even though pretty much every other voice told you not to do it. Yeah. Um, I was signed with CAA and I left, which is like one of the biggest agencies in the world. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, um, I don't want to go too much into it. But sure, sure. I just, yeah, I just felt for myself that it wasn't working for me and anybody yeah. else would probably say that you're crazy, you know? And I was like, yeah. something's telling me that, that this, it's, it's just not working anymore. They were, they really were great. And it just, it just, I, I felt like I needed to go on a, on a different avenue. So um, that would be one. It's interesting because I also know people who were like, fighting so hard to get into a certain position or to get where they wanted to be. Yeah. And then you meet them again and you hear they left. And as you say, people are like, are you crazy? You were there where you wanted to be. How the hell can you just leave? And obviously mm -hmm. they have stories why and so. So yeah. but yeah, it can it's so fascinating because a lot of people don't have like an understanding if you know a person fights for so long for something and then he the person finally has it and then leaves and people are like struggling to understand that totally um well so i think it's like some people just always want to challenge you know it's hard to stay still and second of all yeah. sometimes it's not what you think that it was you know? yeah yeah and, and you just and there's i think if you're a failure i think people you know, this movie talks about having to be able to forgive yourself. But I also think that people, just because you change your mind doesn't mean that you failed. Absolutely, totally. I mean, speaking of paths, because there's also a dialogue from Dr. Peters that goes like, mm, it's a new path. So of course one can feel lost. And I was wondering if that is something you can relate to if you ever oh, actually feel lost. Yeah when changing and when making a new path yeah oh my gosh yeah um you know like I said like I moved away but beyond that it's like no one in my family are actors or artists like all of this is so new um mm -hmm. and you are playing with ego which can be like a very dangerous like it exists in all of us um and gosh, life, life can be hard and the only way out is through. And I think that's kind of what Dr. Peters was talking about is that like, you can't, don't try to avoid the mess, you know, yeah. sometimes you're just gonna have to sludge through it. Um, but there's, uh, I forget the, his name, the, uh, the author where he talks about, um, oh my gosh, he's, uh, he wrote a book and he survived the Holocaust. Do you know who I'm talking about? Um, I'm not sure. Oh my gosh. I wish I knew it because it's 
oh my gosh, it's on the tip of my tongue. But he talks about how when you experience sorrow or hurt and pain and like that, it creates this deep well in you. But the deeper the well, the more you can fill it with joy. So it's like if you live in this, in this, you know, with this much depth, you're only ever going to have that much amount of joy. But if you allow yourself to feel the sorrow, then it can become even more full with joy. You'll get the extremes of both emo emotions. And I just always thought that's like, and I have no judgment for how people want to live their lives, but that's like, that's the path that I'd rather take. One of the reasons why Dr. Peters goes to your character is because something happens that didn't exactly go the way your character hoped it would. So she had like, she was like, she was very optimistic about it. And she really had like the best intentions and she really mm -hmm. thought she, she might be able to help in that specific, in that particular moment. And obviously things didn't exactly go the way she wanted. Um, and I was wondering if you do remember like a specific moment where you actually had the best intentions as a person or as an artist. And for whatever reason, it didn't exactly work out the way you imagined. Yeah, I'm an older sister. <laughs> There's many times that I thought I was doing the right thing for my younger sister and she would be like, absolutely not what I needed. Um, I also think it's interesting, like if you think about in relationships, like I think love languages are so fascinating that like sometimes you think that you're being loving, but it's not the way that that person wants to be loved. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, people have different boundaries, all of those things. Um, yeah, that would be, I'm trying to think. I'm, I've definitely made huge mistakes in my life. I'm not, you know. We all do, right? I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know a person who, who, who's like 90 years old and saying, I never, never made a mistake. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Jacqueline, seriously, I want to thank you so much for, for joining us today, for, for uh, taking your time to talk to me um i and love your also, questions they're really interesting i haven't gotten many of those before oh i'm so happy very very <laughs> happy to hear that uh because yeah. I, I i i love it when when we can have like conversation that goes a little bit deeper and, yeah. and i mean i i really think that there are like again so many topics in the movie that really do share something important and so that's that's why i like took that that that's what I took from from your movie well yeah yeah well thank you so much um is what drew me to play her so it's just like there's so many psychological and like human things and like I love that she's so like she's flawed in a lot of ways but with the best intentions oh absolutely <laughs> yeah totally yeah. <laughs> all right Seriously. well thank you so much thanks again and all the best for today's release yeah thanks <laughs> I'm about to put some my, I'm going to complete the habit. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs>